I think it's good that we have Mother's Day in spring because it always reminds me of the life and so many mothers have brought young people into life and it's just awesome. I know it's some of us, oh, there I am. All right, some of us, it can be a mixed emotion day. You know, my mother died about 17 years ago. So um, it was, it's sweet and yet sad at the same time. And some of us want to be mothers and can't. And so there's all those dynamics. There's a, a mixed emotion. But the point of this day is to honor mothers. And we, we do honor you. We appreciate the hard work and love that you show each one of your children. Thank you so much for that. Today we're going to be in Acts. We actually have today and next week and we'll be done with Acts. And then we are going to start going through the Bible in three years. So we'll start in Genesis and we'll go all the way to Revelations. And my encouragement to you is we're going to do five chapters a week. So you can read five chapters a week. Everybody could read five chapters a week. You can read it all at once. You could break it up. But it's not that much to read five chapters a week. So at the end of that three years, if you read the five chapters every week, you have read through the Bible in its entirety once, right? And then hopefully I will be able to hit on a lot of the themes throughout Scripture and that we can understand how Scripture all fits together in God's complete revelation. Sometimes when we preach one book and then another book and we move around, it's hard to get the entire picture. So hopefully this will be an encouragement to you guys and uh, a fun exercise for me. So um, three years, uh, so we will, not next week, but the next week after that, uh, I'll be uh, in Genesis and we'll be covering Genesis chapters one through five. So that's coming up. Today we're talking about God's power displayed through us or God's power demonstrated in us. Um, I couldn't decide and I keep changing it. And my wife put it one way in the bulletin because I told her what that. And then later on I changed my mind after the bulletins were printed. But we, in the story that we're looking at, the account of Paul's voyage to Rome, uh, we know that Paul was appealed to Caesar and he got sent to Rome and we a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about him journeying along the coast and how that Paul's journey is a lot like all lives and that we need to keep God in reference. We need to keep God in sight and that there is difficulties in life. And they had a difficult wind at the beginning and they was contrary, but they persevered. And then we know that we needed to listen to godly counsel. Godly counsel was important. Because when you don't listen to godly counsel, you get yourself in some pretty nasty storms. And that's what happened. You see, the sailors, they were at Fairhaven, and they wanted to sail uh, 76 miles to uh, another city, uh, Sinchiai or something like that. I can't remember how to pronounce the name. But it wasn't very far away. And they thought, oh, the winds are good. Let's go. But Paul had said, you know what? I think it's best if we stay here. And they didn't listen to that council, and they got on their ship, and they sailed. And then they got hit with a northeaster, a hurricane-forced winds. And for 14 days, they were blown by the sea. They, didn't, they were so seasick, they didn't eat. They were throwing all their cargo overboard. And sometimes when we don't listen to godly counsel, we end up with a huge storm in our lives. Right? And it calls for all hands on deck. But that... We talked about that and how God provides in spite of us. God is faithful even when we are faithless. And today I want to talk about how at the end of the storm we come to the island and God displays his power in us and through us and how Paul does this on this island. You know, Paul had no intention of going to the island of Malta. But God used the storm to bring him there. God uses the storms in our lives to bring us oftentimes to places where he wants us to minister. And the people, the natives on the island of Malta, receive the gospel. They receive the good news. They see God's power displayed all because of these storms. All because of this hurricane that comes and drives them over 400 miles off course. So the storm that you're in right now, 
that each of us will experience. It has a point and it has a purpose. God is working it for good in your life. And oftentimes you don't see that until after you're through it. And you reflect back on it. And you go, wow, look what he did. You know, my mother dying was probably one of the hardest things that I've gone through in my life. I was 21 at the time when she died. And at the time, if you asked me if this is good, I would have said, no, this is terrible. This is the worst thing that could ever happen to my family. But 17 years later, in hindsight, I can go, this is a blessing. I can say, this is how God has caused me to grow, and he's shaped me, and he's formed me into the man that I am today, and that was a key part of it, because it called me to dependence on him. And that's what these storms do. They call us to fall to our knees and cry out to the God who made us, who loves us, and to hold on to him with all that we have. We're in Acts chapter 28 today, and we're looking at verses 1 through 16. And those two things I want you to keep in mind as we look for it. What, when God's power is displayed through us, we have to watch for it. Because oftentimes, God works in the mundane. God works through, through normal means. But yet, it is his power that is working. So I have a car, Volvo XC90. I like that car until I have to keep putting it in the shop. And it's supposed to be all-wheel drive, and it hasn't been all-wheel drive all winter because the real differential was having issues. And so I took it into Jim Kids, great shop, and I had them working on it. But I only have one vehicle. And so when my car goes in the shop and I only have one vehicle, it's kind of like, ah! However, God has provided me with a body of Christ that seems to like me a lot, Praise the Lord. And they have been more than generous in providing me with vehicles. In fact, it's been funny because I'm driving vehicles that I would never normally drive. And people are thinking, wow, that's a nice vehicle. That, that, they must pay that pastor pretty good. <laughs> but it's those generous hearts that God is providing for me in the midst of my mini trial of my car not working. Right? He's providing that, and I have to watch for it. I need to be aware of it. The second thing is to give God the glory for it. I need to praise him. I need to praise him in my family. I need to praise him in my workplace. I need to praise him in the church. God did this for me this week. You know, one of the most powerful things that we can use to witness to people is talking about what God has done in our lives. God's power displayed in us. God's power demonstrated in us. That's, that, that's the most effective means. Obviously, we share the, the scripture with that, and we share, combine that. But one of the most powerful testimony is, I know he lives because he walks with me and he talks with me along life's way. And to be transparent about that with our friends, with our families, with our co-workers... Verse 1 says, after we were brought safely through, we then learned that the island was called Malta. They didn't even know where they were. Right? At the end of the last sermon, we were, they were, ran aground on a reef. The back of the ship was breaking up. The soldiers were ready to kill all the prisoners. The satyrian stopped them. He said, everybody who can swim, jump overboard and make it for the shore. If you can't swim, grab some drift, drift wood and hang on for dear life. And God worked a miracle there. He provided that not one of them would die. And they show up, they're soaking wet, sopping from the sea. It's cold. And we'll see it's raining. But God then provides the people of Malta to provide. The native people showed up, showed us unusual kindness. For they kindled the fire and welcomed us all. Because it was begin to rain and it was cold. You know what? In that time period, it was most likely that the natives would have enslaved them. And sold them into slavery. Not shown kindness. But God walks through that. This shipwreck. This stranded on a deserted island. We have movies about this whole thing. This one's not a deserted one. It has people on it. But people who are kind. When Paul had gathered up a bundle of sticks, he put them on the fire. Paul's serving. Serving. Paul is out there picking up sticks. You know, one thing about church is that everybody serves. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a place and a, and a way to serve the church. 
And God calls us all into service. And Paul, he's, he's not above manual labor. Good for Paul. Right? He's right out there gathering firewood with everybody else. He's not saying, I'm the teacher. I don't need to pick up sticks. I'm a deacon. I don't do that. I pray and study the word of God. Right? No, there isn't that tiered system. There isn't that I'm better than you. No, Paul's serving right along with everybody else. And then sometimes when you're serving, you know what happens? You get bit. Somebody in the church says something about your service. That's not very nice. They're not very appreciative. Right? And that hurts. And then we have to practice love and forgiveness and reconciliation and engaging. But oftentimes that's hard. Sometimes we just want to say, forget it. I'm not serving no more. They don't appreciate me. Right? But our service isn't about, it isn't about the others and what they think. It's about what we do for God. And we're serving him and we're honoring him. And we, he's called us to love one another. And so in that, we need to work to reconcile that. Hey, brother, when you said that to me, that was offensive. That didn't show appreciation. I felt devalued. But as he threw the wood that he had gathered on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened onto his hand. Oof. Now, we're not going to be, you know, handling snakes up here. But fastened on his hand, that means it like bit, and he's like flicking it like this, and it's not coming off. Right? And then he flicks it enough, and it flings into the fire, fastens on his hand. Sometimes when you think you're doing good, and you, you, he's thinking, man, I've been, I've been re, uh, saved. Uh, I'm finally off that stinking ship. I mean, the, the ground still feels like it's moving because it's been 14 days of waves, you know. But now I'm bitten by a snake. Oh, a, a poisonous snake. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man's a mortal. And then they say that because the, he's being judged. It, the snakes in, in that culture were... Uh, were Renowned, and so if a snake bites you, then that's the judgment of the gods. So though he's escaped from the sea, which is another method of judgment, justice was not allowed, has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. So he's like, oh yeah, I got a snake bite. <sighs> that hurt. Right? They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. So obviously they had seen people get bit by these snakes. And whatever this venom caused them some pretty severe uh, reactions. But Paul, nothing happened. But when they waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their mind and said, well, he's a god. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. He's not a god. And Paul, it doesn't say here, but everywhere else in Paul, in the, in the accounts and acts, when they say that he's a god, Paul automatically says, no, it's not me. It's not me, it's God. He gives God the glory. He gives God the glory. And you know, when, when God works in our lives, we need to give him the glory. We need to watch for it. We need to be paying attention to it, attuned to it. And then we need to give him the glory. And this is what Paul has done throughout Acts, is give God the glory. And use it as a platform to talk about what God has done for you and me. And that is that he has sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins that we might have a relationship with God and begin to live for eternity with him. In John it says this is eternal life. John 17 3 that you may know him and the one whom he has sent. Eternal life is knowing God. That's what eternal life is. And we will spend an eternity knowing him, discovering him. And if you haven't confessed Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart, then you need to do that. You, you need to start that relationship with God. It's so important because you have a choice between eternity with God or eternity in hell. And you really want to spend that eternity with God, not in hell. Hell's not a fun place. You're not going to drink beers with your buddies. It's not going to go down that way. 
It's eternal torment. That's the choices before you. A relationship with God where you just get to discover him or not. And as you discover that relationship, you're living in that relationship now and you need to watch how God is working in your life and you need to give him glory for it. Now the neighborhood, <clears throat> sorry, uh, they, verse 7. Now in the neighborhood of that place, where the lands belonged to the chief man of the island named Pubilus, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. So hospitality is being extended. It happened that the father of Pubilus lay sick with fever and dysentery. And Paul visited him and prayed, putting his hands on him and healed him. And when he had taken this at place in Sorry. And when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had, had diseases also came and were cured. They also honored us greatly, and when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. And after three months, so three months they were here in the company of these people, sharing the gospel, testifying of what God has done. In fact, they're going and Paul's laying hands on and praying for people and they're being healed. And we pray for people on a regular basis here. And God works. God works. And we need to be mindful that when we ask God to do something and when then he does it, we need uh, in the way that we expect it. And even when he does it in the way that we don't expect that we give him glory. You know, we just sent out a couple weeks ago, uh, last week, uh, that we had been praying for Rich and that Rich would get a job and that, that uh, Rich would uh, um, find a place to live. And by, by, a, by God's grace, he has a job and he has an apartment now with a garage. Praise the Lord, right? And there's all kinds of things in our lives that we prayed for and God answers. God sometimes says, no, not now or wait. But he is working and we need to attune ourselves to that. We need to attune ourselves to God's work in our lives and in the lives of those around us and give him glory for it. He's working here. And you know what? Most of the time in Acts, his working has always been a bridge to share the gospel. It's always been a bridge to invite people into deeper relationship with him. And so when we attune ourselves to God's working and we give God the glory, then we are building bridges in our lives in the people around us to draw them closer to God and in the deeper relationship with him. So after three months, they set ship, they set sail in a ship that had wintered on the island it was a ship from Alexandria, so it's another grain ship like the one that they were riding on before. This one has twin gods as figureheads. Uh, it's uh, two twins of, the, of Zeus, uh, and they were the gods of the seas. But putting in at Cyprus, we stayed there for three days, and from there we made a circuit and arrived at Regium. And after one day, the south wind sprang up, and on the second day, we came to Portilio. There we found brothers and were invited to stay with them for seven days, and so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, came f f as far as the forums of Apius and the three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. And when he came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. So Paul has, uh, he's in change, but he has freedom of movement. That is God walking right there, huge, right? He's appealed to Caesar, he's a prisoner of Rome, and yet he's getting the fellowship with the Christian believers. They're coming, he's teaching, he's preaching. He's wrote several, at this time, he writes several books of the New Testament um, during this captivity time. Philemon is one of them, and he's writing this, and he's at Rome. In change, but he's been given grace to preach the gospel to the brothers and sisters in Rome, to preach to the whole Italian cohort, the whole Roman guard there. He shares the gospel because of God's grace, because of God's work there. God's working in your life. Are you tuned into it? Are you aware of it? You know, one of the biggest works we have in our lives is our mothers. 
God uses all mothers in so many ways. You know, she's been, my mom has been dead 17 years and she, God still uses her in my life. The things she said, the things she's done, the love she showed. Are you in tune to what God is doing in your life? And then when you are in tune and when you see it, are you giving him glory? And are you sharing that with those around you? If not, today's a great day to start. If you are, oh, awesome. Keep up the good work. Keep sharing what God is doing in your life. Stay in that relationship. If you don't have a relationship with God, if you, if you can't testify to what God is doing because you don't know him, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to say, yes, Jesus I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again and you paid the penalty for my sin. I believe that and I want a relationship with you. And he will send his Holy Spirit who will fill you and empower you for the walk and for the change and for that relationship. God is working. He's working in big ways and in subtle ways. And we need to tune ourselves to see how he's working and to give him glory. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you're working in our lives. We thank you that you are changing us and transforming us. Lord, we pray that we would give you the glory and honor that is due to your name. Lord, that we would not be ashamed of the power of God walking in us, but that we would declare it boldly to all those around us, praising you and thanking you for what you've done and what you're going to do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.